Welcome to Hard Questions, where we gather our pastors together and take the tough questions and answer them right out of the Bible. I'm Don Black. I'm your host and moderator. And on today's panel are... Dr. William R. Glaze, Bethany Baptist Church in Pittsburgh. Chris Gibbs, pastor of Crossway Church in the Mars area. Pete Giacalone, Rainbow Temple Assembly of God Church, McKeesport, Pennsylvania. J. Anthony Gilbert, Kingdom Restoration Christian Center, Mount Washington. Pastors, we're going to deal with kind of uh, Christianity 101 here mm -hmm. in the first part of the program mm -hmm. because there's so many people who don't know. Mm. You know, we always assume that everybody has a basic understanding of the, of the, of the principles of for the faith, but that's not a, a safe assumption. So the first question that's been sent in to us or that we want to ask is, how am I saved? How am I saved? That's Christianese. How mm -hmm. am I saved? Anybody want to jump in there? Well, I'll, I'll go. Ephesians 2 um, yeah. is where I really went to. It says, you are saved by grace through faith. Now, we could take yeah. a half hour yeah, on yeah, just yeah, that yeah, right yeah. there, really, in essence. But it's our faith in Christ mm -hmm. that releases the grace of God to work the miracle in our hearts to make us a new creature in Christ that brings salvation into our world. So, in essence, the simple mm -hmm. way of putting it is that it's by simple belief in Jesus Christ that we get our salvation. You know, and to continue on with that verse and the next part of that, it is, and, and it, this is not of your own doing. Mm -hmm. It is the gift of God, not a result of work so that no one may boast. And I like how Jesus even said it in Matthew 7. He says, uh, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. And it goes on, you, you, many will say, we did this and this and this. And he said, well, tell them, depart from me. I never knew you. That word no in the Greek is the word gnosko, which right. is actually a Jewish idiom for sexual intercourse. Intimacy. It's this idea of intimacy. It's the mm -hmm. same word that Mary would say, hey, how can I be pregnant? I've never known a man. It's, I've never, this intimacy. So you want to know that you're saved, this intimacy with God comes into full play. And then we have that theological way, uh, you know, again, in Romans chapter 10, it says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes in the righteousness and with the mouth mm -hmm. confession is made in salvation. And I believe that, but in my own personal life, what happened was I knew I was a wretch. I knew I was a wreck. And in my life, I just knew I had to call the very moment I said, Lord, please, that's when my whole life was radically changed. So we have this form, I, I hate to use the word formula, but I think it's a matter of the heart. Amen. In other words, if, if you prayed a different prayer than I prayed, God saw a heart Amen. In, in the need of acceptance. Well, that's, that, that, that word. Oh, I'm so, sorry. I was, I, oh, I, no, no. I, you, guys, you can't hey. add to perfection. <laughs> hey, Pastor Pete, Dr. Gray's already been saved. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He's already got saved. Yeah. Now, see, we, we slow that word around a lot. Yeah. yeah. You know, are you yeah. saved? Yeah. Well, the, the, what do you save from? That's, this is where I wanted to jump in. Uh, we are saved from the wrath of God. Yeah. Mm. When you look at, uh, 1 John 2.2, 2, it says, and he is the propitiation mm -hmm. for our okay. sins mm -hmm. and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. And that word propitiation is a 50 cent word. So, I, you know, I, I use this illustration to explain it is that there was a truck with the wrath of God on the side mm -hmm. and two angels were driving the truck and they were just looking for people to run down and they were running people down all over the place. And they said, here, there goes Bill Glaze. Let's run him down so he can experience the wrath of God. And just as a truck got to me, Jesus pushed me out of the way and he took the hit for me. Wow. And that's, so we are saved from the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anybody add to that? Yeah, I, I believe um, we're saved three things I want to mention. There's th we're saved from hell for one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, we're saved from the product of sin, deprivation, mm -hmm. lack, all those things. But because of ourselves. We're safe from ourselves. Oh, amen. The Bible says in Romans 6, 6, that he destroyed the body of sin. So we should no longer be the slaves of sin, which makes us subject so, right. to the wrath of God. Yeah, right. And so that's why I believe people say, well, I'm saved. Well, what are you saved from? That's right. Where that's did right. God set you free from yourself, oh. which is the qualification of that yeah. sinful nature is the wrath of God. So yeah. where is he delivering you? Where is there a change of conduct? Where is there a change of, I once did wrong, now I'm doing yeah. right. So as a result of being saved from ourselves, we're saved from the product of sin or ultimately 
only we're saved from hell. And you know, with that, you know, exactly right. And with that, we got it. We are saved from a separation. See, when sin came into this world, it separated the connection that man had with God, that God created man to have. When Jesus came in and we are saved, we are saved from that separation and we restored back to that original design of creation, which is to walk hand in hand That's with right. the Father. Right. Jesus came and gave us access to live in that holy of holies. Even look at the tabernacle. There was separation. You couldn't get in there. Even the priest couldn't go in there, but uh, under certain circumstances, Jesus came, that veil rent. And so salvation gives me that opportunity to live in the relationship for which I was created. And, and, and I love what you said, Jay. Really, bottom line, he saved me from me. I agree with everything else, the draft, but me, I, I was on a path headed for total destruction mm. and he saved me from me. You know what I think a lot of times people think, Brother Don, is that they think that when we get saved, like God just cleans up what we already were. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like, you know, he just covered my sins. Not understanding, right, right. you become a citizen of just heaven. Right, you right. become a son or a right daughter now, in Christ. Right now and that yes. is the miracle. He right. saved, took all of that out Amen. and put a new in, in us, a new us in us. DNA. That's yeah. right. So, so yes. you know, Amen. so when we look at the grace of God and how mm -hmm. that, you know, God looked at us and he didn't want us to experience his wrath. You know, God is not willing that any should perish. So he sent Jesus oh. to die on the cross Amen. and Jesus felt the full brunt of the right. wrath of God when he died on Amen. the cross. Oh, so All good. the wrath of God yes. was, poured, so was poured out on Christ. Oh, right. Past, present, and future. Right. So and that was grace. You know, yes, that yes. was grace right there. Amen. Because we should have been hanging on that cross. I should have. <laughs> well, it's, it, it's more for me what Jesus saved me for. And he, yes, why, God, yeah. why God sent, let's take it to why God saved me and saved you. What he saved us for, because he wanted to have a relationship with us. Right. He wanted us to be in a personal connection where we'd have that intimacy mm -hmm. that you're describing, Chris, and we'd have that relationship as Adam had with him and Eve had with him back before sin came into the picture. He longs for that type of a personal intimate Amen. relationship with us, his, his, his kids, because we're made in his image. We're Amen. body, mind, and spirit made in his image. And he saved me for him, you, you know saved what? you for him. And that's how it's going to play out. Well, it's going to play out for eternity, right. me and him, us and him. Yeah. Right. I, I love to put it this way. Remember that song, and for thy pleasure, Mm -hmm. They were created, I, I always sang, even to this day, and for thy pleasure, I was created. We mm -hmm. were created, think of it, yeah. we were created yeah. for the pleasure of Amen. God. Amen. Wow. The ple Amen. He takes pleasure. Amen. I, can't, I can see him taking pleasure over you, but over me. <laughs> uh, no, and, <laughs> no, and, and people say, does. I'm not saying that to be, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. I mean that sincerely. Yeah. He, for his pleasure. Well, and if we can get that into our people's hearts, amen. you were created for the pleasure of God. Well, you know, the other thing I think that's important because as you read the gospels, it said that Jesus preached the kingdom of God. That's right. He preached the kingdom that's of right. God. That's and right. so I believe that we've also been saved to promote the kingdom of God here on this oh, earth. Oh my gosh. And we, I think we're losing sight of that. Right, right. I, I am. Yeah. And I'm not saying that braggadociously. Yeah. Right. I say that with sorrow. Right. Amen. Well, there's, there, there's, there was this gap between God and us that had to be filled. Yeah. Amen. And that gap got filled through the sacrifice of Jesus. And that Passover, Easter was when that gap was, oh, was, was completed. Right. Right. And so we welcome him as our savior because of that. Now yeah. we have a relationship. And who said that a minute ago? Oh, I thought Pastor Pete, our DNA, the Bible says yes, when yes. we're in Christ, we're a new creation. That's exactly what it means. Amen. A new Amen. creation. We're just not a new version of us. That's right. That's we're right. a new creation. Amen. Yeah. We're, we're a heavenly being. Our citizenship transferred. Wow. I'm an American citizen, but Amen. I'm really a heavenly That's right. uh, citizen. And you are heaven. a saint now. And if, if, they could, if they could measure me from a chemical or biological, right. spiritual perspective, they could see, science could see my DNA has been changed because mm. now I have yeah. eternity stamped in Because he didn't come to make a better version of you. He no. came to make a dead version of you so he could live through you because it's not you, it's him. But me was already dead. <laughs> yeah. The he didn't know it. I was already dead. He just I, didn't know but it. But he brought life. Yeah. Yeah. If you to be you risen with Christ. Christ. So in order to be risen, we've got to be dead with him. Amen. Amen. Why would anybody not accept that such a, such a wonderful gift from God. Right. Yeah, yeah, and you know, one of the reasons is because Satan has blinded their eyes. Yeah. And they, I mean, you know, cause they can't see it. You know, I, I look at my life for 20 some years, mm. I walked around in that blindness. Mm. And then 
you know, one day the light went off Hopefully. and I saw, you know, the wretchedness of my sin. Yeah. And I asked Christ to come into my life and, you know, my life was changed. Immediately. Mm -hmm. Right. That was the Holy right. Spirit, right? Yeah, oh yeah. That was the Holy yeah. Spirit working in you, drawing right. you, drawing you. Right. The word says no man comes to the Father unless he's drawn by the Holy Spirit. Pastor. Well, you know, I think you, just to kind of springboard off what you said, there's also that reality. I think the reason why people don't want to come to Christ is they don't really see that it should have been them on the cross. Wow. We just think like, well, you know, like you said, that new version piece, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. It, I'm not really that bad. But if you could see yourself through the light of eternity and through God's eyes, you'd say, woe unto me. And besides, right. it means right. that I got to let go of some things that I'm not ready to let go of. I want yeah. God, but I want to hold on to this too. And God doesn't play that kind of a game. We have to choose one or the other. So that means, let me hold on to this because I have time later. But we are, that, that, is, a, that, is, a mirai or that, that is a fallacy that we have, that we have time later. Well, no one knows what tomorrow holds. And no. you're reviewing this program. Maybe you feel the spirit moving inside of you right now saying, I want that for me. If you want that type of a personal relationship with your heavenly father who loves you so much, loves you so much that he gave his most precious possession mm -hmm. that you would be able to be connected to him forever, say yes to that. Say yes, receive that gift from the father because he, he did it for you. Call us on 888-665-4483 and let us pray with you. I've got some material that I've written that I want to give to you that will help you down the journey of receiving this new life. Be, get your DNA changed. Get your DNA changed. So stay tuned because we're going to come back with more hard questions. Welcome back to Hard Questions, where we've gathered the pastors together, the team together, and take questions from you. And then we answer the questions right out of the Bible. We're so glad that you're tuned in. I'm uh, encouraging you to stay tuned in because we've got two very important questions for eternity, and this is the first. If salvation has nothing to do with our own works, then how do you explain the scripture that says, it's in Philippians, to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You know, the sad thing, Don, is there's a semicolon there at verse 12. Because verse 13 says, for it is God who works in you. So there's no way I'm going to work, you know, be able to work out. It says, for God works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. So people think, oh, I got, I have to. So now he will enable us and give us the power. Now, see, because people see that verse and think, oh, I have to work out. No, there's no man alive that's going to work out his own salvation. That's literally impossible. But he will enable us to do his will. Amen. And, and Amen. you know, I think that, you know, in this verse, it, it kind of jumped, two things jump out. Yes. You know, the, the root and the fruit. You know, the root is that I'm rooted in Christ, there you that I'm go. saved. And as a result of me being rooted in Christ, mm -hmm. I have fruit. And so when it talks about work out your salvation, mm -hmm. that's the fruit that's coming out of the root that's right. with uh, this relationship with yeah. Christ. That's it. Yeah. Well, and the grace of God always requires cooperation with the word of God. And so therefore, in order, the Bible says we are saved by grace right. through faith. But the Bible also says that faith without what works is dead. is dead. So when I hear, it should operate something in me that causes me to move in obedience. Mm -hmm. So when we're working out our own salvation, it's God that puts the desire to will and to do, but we have to cooperate yeah, yeah, with yeah, yeah, yeah. him. And that is the grace right. of God that gives the ability to walk out the total salvation. Okay, I'm glad, I'm glad I'm piggybacking off of you because here's the deal. There are two different words <laughs> no pun intended, at work, you know, in that passage. Work out your fear, your salvation of fear and trembling, and then it's God that works in you. Those aren't the same words in, in, in Greek, okay? Uh, and this is important because the first word is the word, and I don't say it very well, but uh, katergazomai, okay? I don't know if I said that right or really close, but the idea, and that's the part that I have to do, and that is to accomplish, to do it. I have to do it. I got to do the salvation, not do into the salvation, but once he saves me, now I got to do something to show that. But it's God that works in you, that is the word, the Greek word energio, okay, where you get the word energy or to energize, and that's to be at work, right. to show active. So as God is active Enabling. in my life, and he's the one that enabled and opened the right. door of access, now guess what? I have to do something with it. I have to apply it, and that's the part I have responsibility for. So, so the power is there. 
God, God is going to give us the enabling. Yeah. We have to have the want to. He gave you the right. access. Now he's called for you to apply. There's right. access and right. application. I like to like say it like this. He gives you the unction to function. <laughs> now you got the function. That's right. All we need is phone. Right. <laughs> Somebody come up with a phone. Right. That three points and, and the song, we're done. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Oh, okay. It's one of my favorite scriptures because it, it, it has embedded in it so much truth. Amen. Mm. Amen. That's right. Because, because Paul's talking to the Philippians and he says, now in my, in my, when I was with you right before the scripture, you always would obey. And now in my absence, you still obey. And in relationship to their obedience, their yeah. follow through with yeah. the gospel, their part of the deal, mm -hmm. he said, work out your salvation. Yeah. So right. the salvation is not eternal salvation. That's not what we're talking right. about here. We're not talking about heaven and hell. Right. We're talking about abundant life. Now, right. There's a lot of people that live this lie. They believe this lie that when I come to Jesus, it's all done. Okay, every problem is fixed. I am saved and now I have this eternal bliss for the rest of my life. And the fact is that sometimes it actually gets harder at that moment because all of those things that the enemy had against you, he's still targeting you. Yeah. Now we got to work it out. We got to apply it. You got to get in the word of God. You got to pray. You got to be in church. You've got to be discipled. There's work to be done. You didn't work yourself into it, but you're going to work yourself to apply well, well, it. And the thing that we don't want to miss too are the words that's tagged onto it, fear and trembling. That's it. That's it right but, you know, that means that you know, everything that I do, like us serving here today, you know, it needs to be, you know, not, not scared of God, but no, you know, no, no. with a sense of awe and That's reverence, yeah. you know, that, that I'm here today, mm. you know, to, to reverence God. And I know these men here, you know, they, they read these questions, you know, we, we pray over these questions. Mm. And so as we're answering them, you know, you know, we try our best to do it in the fear and mm. trembling of God mm. so that, you know, there's somebody out there listening that yeah. might be hanging on mm. to our words, you know, and, and trying to make a decision mm. based on what we're saying. And we do it with the fear and the That's trembling right of God. That's so good. You know, another thing about fear and trembling too is that God don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's one of the realities. If you say, the Bible says, don't harden your heart. You know, when he starts putting those desires in you to yeah. do right or to obey, he's saying, do it with fear and trembling. Why? Because it's him that's working in you. Right. He's giving you a desire and woe unto us if we start telling God no and we don't cooperate with the grace of God. Well, that's, a, that's at verse 13 because that's where your colon came in. Mm -hmm. Semicolon says, yes. for it is God. Right. So work out your salvation with mm -hmm. fear and trembling. Take it seriously. Do, yeah. It, yeah. do, it, do it on purpose. Mm -hmm. For it is God Amen. who works in you. Right. Yep. To do what? Both to fear, uh, to, to will, to, will, will, to have the desire. Right. right. So right. first you got to have a desire. That's right. So I, I go, so I got a desire. So if you don't have a desire right now, ask God for right. a desire mm -hmm. and then for to will and then to do, to, to do is the power. Because you can desire all day long and not have the power to do right, it. You're just right. stuck in the mud. Mm -hmm. right. So God's, well, the reason this is one of my favorite verses is for, for his good pleasure. We say, how do we please God? Here's how you please Amen. God. Right. How do you make God smile? How do you make God Amen. happy? Amen. How do you make God go, that's my son. Amen. That's yep. my son is when we do his will yep. by his power. Yeah. And then we do it with, with, with joy. And Don, there's one word in there too. That word fear is also a word in the Greek that means reverence for one's husband. And because we are the bride of Christ, mm. we do it with, like you were saying, but we do it not just with a reverence and an awe of God. We do that, but the fact that I am the bridegroom of Christ. Mm. He, I am the, you know, he is my husband in that mm. sense. I'm reverencing that authority. I'm reverencing that relationship. And so many of us, we live even Christian lives without reverencing right. the relationship with the Father. With Jehovah God, the creator of all right creation. Right. We've got to shift gears into okay. our final question for the day. Is it necessary, this is very important, for a sinner to pray the sinner's prayer <laughs> to be saved? Well, look at the thief on the cross. Just, just as a perfect example, all he said was, Lord, remember me. Yeah. And Jesus saw the heart. So, you know, for us who are evangelicals, we have, you know, say, Jesus, come into my heart, you know. And I'm not making fun no, of that. not at all. I, and, and please, if you take it that way, I'm sorry. I apologize. But the thief on the cross simply said, Lord, please, will you, come, will you remember me? And Jesus saw the cry. Yep. 
of his heart. And I had a, I had somebody call me a couple weeks ago, and they called. I had talked to him before, and they weren't really interested. They called me in the at night, and they were crying, and they said, Pastor Chris, uh, I can't do this anymore. I need Jesus Christ. And so we talked about that. And I was just about to say, okay, pray this prayer with me. I said, you know what? No, I want you to pray. You tell God who you are. You tell God what you need. You tell God yes. that you that you need forgiveness, yes. and, and and I'll help you yeah. out if you need help. And he prayed the most beautiful, awesome, desperate yeah. prayer. And so, yes, I think you do need to pray a quote, a quote, sinner's prayer, but there's no formula to that. You just got to declare yeah. that, God, I need you. Well, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. I was just going to say, ahead. Paul said that if thou will confess That's with thy you. mouth yeah. the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart yeah. that God has raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto yeah. righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So, I mean, you know, I don't necessarily, and, and I'm a Baptist, right? And so, you know, we, you know, <laughs> You're that's, Are you yeah, yeah, I'm Baptist, man. <laughs> Baptist born and Baptist bred, and when I die, I'll be Baptist dead. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, I mean, you know, there's a big thing about the sinner's prayer, you know, yeah, with, with Baptists. Yeah. But, but I'm just saying right here, he just said if you can, conf you know, confess with your mind and believe in your heart. That is, that's so, it. yeah. Well, I think Amen. the one thing, too, it says the I'm sinner's sure. prayer. And I think there has to be a revelation that's that fine. I'm a sinner. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's where I find out that I right. need there to be go. saved. So as long it. as you believe that, however you get there, praise God. Yeah. You've got to confess your sins, don't you, Pastor? Don't, confess your sins. You've got to repent. Yeah. Is it repentance part of it? Sure. It's just not taking on another layer and say, oh, gee, I'll put Jesus in my wallet here. You know, it's another, <laughs> another card it's I not carry. It's necessarily wrong if you do lead somebody into that thing, but I think no. we sometimes get so formulatic in the words that it's just, hey, just tell him who you are. Yeah. Tell him what you've done. Tell him that you need him. Yeah. Well, you know, it's the Holy Spirit that draws you there anyway. I mean, yeah. if you're feeling that in your heart, it's because yeah. God's saying, come home. <laughs> that's, that's, right. that's all. And God doesn't make it hard to come home. Good. And we'll, we'll, we'll make it hard sometimes for people to come home, but God doesn't make it hard Amen. to come home. You know, we're going to take a break. We'll come back and we're going to do our lightning round. We'll be right back. We end every Hard Questions program with a scripture today from Romans. We've referenced this already. The word says this, if you dis declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's Romans 10, 9. Okay, pastors, quick rapid fire. How important are the words? I, I think the words become important only after there's been a transformation in the heart. Mm -hmm. That once the heart has been changed, then you confess with your mouth. Yeah, because you know that word confess there, again, I'm loving these uh, word studies, but it, it's to say the same thing as or to promise. So whatever he has said, if I can say the same thing as, yeah, it's important. If I'm saying something different or living something different, then we have a problem. Mm -hmm. I think the word is a desperate cry, help, and knowing that he is a compassionate, graceful, merciful God that hears the word help and mm -hmm. does the work. Good. I like the scripture that you just read because it says, if you confess with your mouth mm -hmm. and believe in your heart. So he's letting us know they have to be synonymous. So words are important. Going back to what Dr. Glaze said, it's as long as it's synonymous That's with it. the heart. That's yeah. good. So, but would we all agree that it starts out in the spirit oh, yes. before it comes out of our Pastor. mouth? Yeah. Unless the spirit draws. It's got to be birthed in the spirit, That's right? right? That's right, without a doubt. And then once, once we have that conviction in our mm. spirit and where we resist, salvation is when we resist the leading and the, and the drawing of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. without response. We just turn our back on it. Yeah. Another day, another time. Today's not convenient time. Because it's not just about the words that you say. It has to do with that transformation. And we get to the place where we realize, I can't do this. This isn't about me. I need somebody who can take me from where I'm at to where he wants me to be. Well, thank you, pastors. And I want to invite you once again, if you feel that leaning and drawing yes. of God right now, call us on the number that's on the screen. God's calling you home. He's saying, son or daughter, come home. I'll take care of it. I'll make you a new creation. I'm going to make your life what I want it to be. If you'll submit to me and work out that salvation mm -hmm. with fear and trembling, he'll give you the desire and Amen. he'll give yes, you the power. The Amen. power. You've been failing in your own power, so why not give that up mm -hmm. and turn to God? We'd love to hear your hard questions. Go to our website, ctvn.org, or uh, call the phone number that's on the screen. God bless you. Real hard, hard, hard questions is dedicated to you. Call in your questions. We want to hear what you have to say. We want to be light and salt so we can be a blessing to you. See you on the next hard questions.